All right, so today I'm gonna do a video about making rings. Uh, I see posted up on a lot of different social media, hey, how do I get started making rings? Uh, a lot of it is from people that have been making bowls and making pens already. Uh, the biggest question is, hey, what, what gear do I need? What, what equipment, what tools do I need? Um, the <laughs> funny thing is, if you're already making pens, and you're making bowls, you've already got all the gear that you really need. Um, there's some other stuff that, that's nice to have, but when it comes down to, you know, what do you need? You need a mandrel, something to keep the pen in place and spin it on the lathe. You need some tools to cut it down, and that's about it. Um, I'll go more into depth about all the, the different things that, that you need to you know make a ring but I'm gonna keep it super simple and I'm gonna use tools that anybody that has ever turned pens and bowls is probably gonna have um, later on more videos down I'll go into talking about other tools that are you know nice to have like carbide tools they make life easier nice to have actual ring mandrels a lot better to use if you're gonna get serious about it but if you're just wanting to try it out you don't need to spend fifty dollars on one of these um, for this video I'm going to show you how to use a pen mandrel and a couple pen blanks to make a ring mandrel and it works out really well I actually put this one together yesterday because my sister wanted a size 3 ring my smallest mandrel goes down to size 5 so I had to improvise a little bit, got a couple ring blanks on my pen mandrel, and really just made a little, little groove in between the two. And what I did, those are just seven millimeter tubes, glued, the, glued those in, got that put on there, and took my spacers for my slimline kit, because again, everybody's got one of those. Um, if not, you can pick up the, the bushings cheap at most, you know, woodcraft type stores, um, rock or any of that. Um, super, super easy. I'm actually going to use this one since I've got these larger ends. I'm going to make myself a size 11 ring because it fits my, my thumb and it fits my middle finger. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll show you how to shape that down. Really, all you're doing is tapering the end. Super easy. But I'll get into a little bit more detail with that. Uh, for the wood that I'm going to use, again, if you've turned a bowl, you've got scraps. If you cut your, um, if you cut your corners off of your bowls before you stick them on your lathe, you've got corners. Well, that's all that is. I just chopped that little piece out. This is ambrosia maple. This other piece, just a piece of quarter inch MDF. You'll see what where that comes in later. So what I do for my ring blank is I just cut it down inch and a half by an inch and a half square and it's just a little bit wider than the ring core that I'm going to use. You don't even need these but it does make it a lot easier and more stable, easier to work with. Uh, so I'm, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch or so on either side of the ring blank. You can go bigger. You're going to trim it down anyways. Uh, for this video I'm going to use three tools and no they're not good tools this is the set that came with my old junk lathe my first lathe that I ever got um, you know, I've got a skew I've got a crap little spindle gouge and I've got a parting tool I may not even use this um, and then I've also got a screwdriver why you'll see um, basically I've just shaved this down I've made a scraper out of it and um, that'll you be used once I drill my hole in my ring blank that'll help me um, core out the center so that my ring core fits properly um, since I've been doing this a while I did go out I bought carbide tools it does make it a lot easier they're easier to control than the screwdriver um, but for the sake of this video I, I'm gonna keep it super simple 
because uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, I need to get this and this and this and this and this to start turning rings. No, you don't. I've got all of it right here. Um, I'll show you. It's pretty easy. All right, so to start it off, I've got my my chuck in here that I use a lot for bowls. It's got the 50 millimeter jaws in there. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece of quarter inch MDF back here just as a spacer and to keep this flat. And I'm going to put that right in there. And tighten it down. That's going to hold your blank into place. The reason I picked an inch and a half is because you've got just a little bit on each of the corners and your your jaws are going to hold that more secure than what you'll ever need when you're turning a ring. So what I'm going to do now that I've got it chucked up is I'm going to drill a hole. Now you can make yourself a drill, hand hold it, put it in the middle and then start hollowing. Um, I'm going to use a Forstner bit. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. <clears throat> the whole point of this video is to show you don't need crazy tools and you know the Jacobs truck is just one more thing that some people yeah, might not have it. So chances are good you've got a drill bit. So I'm going to improvise. Alright, so I just got the biggest drill bit I've got, which is a half inch, and I've got it in a pair of ice grips, or yeah, I guess you can call them that. Um, all I'm going to do, I'm going to start a hole in the center, so I'm going to turn my, my speed down a little bit, and well, yes, there are safer ways to do this, I'm, again, going after the theory of you don't need a lot of crazy expensive tools to get started making rings. So here we go. You might not be able to see it in the camera, but I'm putting my face mask on. That's it. Starter holes drilled. From here, I'm going to open it up a little bit with this skew. And then I'm going to do my final, final scraping to fit my ring core in with a screwdriver. Yes, my banjo hates me. For this, I'm just lining up my tool rest where I'm cutting center. Right about there. With this, yes, you want your tool rest somewhat close, but you want to be able to test your ring. So give yourself a little bit of space in there.
I'm sure that's not there, but I'm going to check anyways. I got a little ways to go. Let's check that again. All right, I'm really close. So now that I'm close like that, I want to bring out my scraper, only because it's got a little more control. I could do it with this, but I I know better. I know myself well enough. I'm better off scraping it out to the final dimension. Very, very close. Still a little too tight towards the back half, so I'm going to just bring that down a little bit. That's it. The ring core is now in the blank. So I'm going to take that out. It's in there a little bit tight. You want a little bit of room to move, not much. But you want it snug so that when you glue it in, it's not moving around on you a lot. So I'm going to get repositioned here and I'll show you the glue up of this. Alright, so I've just got a piece of wax paper down just so it's not getting my workbench all glued up. I tell myself I need to wear gloves every time I do this. I never do. I have super glue on my hands almost constantly. It's a way of life at this point. My glue's uh, dried up a bit on the tip. Alright, that should do. Alright, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go around the inside of the of the blank. I just want to make sure I've got a good even coat all the way around. Now for this I'm just using medium thickness CA glue. You can use thin for the first bit that way it soaks into the wood and stabilizes it a little bit. I don't tend to have too many issues with uh, ring blanks blowing apart on me. But if you find a wood that's particularly finicky, it might be good to use some CA glue, stabilize it a little bit. Drop my ring core. All right. Now I've got my glue on the inside of my blank. I'm just gonna go on the outside of my core now, just like with making pens, you want to make sure to scuff up your surface a little bit. I've already done that. You don't need to see me sanding metal. That's not exciting to watch. All right, there's my blank in my core, or my core in my blank. And I've lost my cap from my glue on the floor. Now I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of activator. 
a little bit because I'm out. And that's going to sit for a few minutes. Harden up a little bit. Let the glue set. Oh, hey, look. There's a little bit left. Just hit it a little bit. All right, so there's that. Core's in. Now, what I usually do is I make sure that before the glue is completely set, I run my finger around the inside. If there is any, any CA glue in there, at this point, it's very easy to scrape it out with a fingernail. If you wait too long, it gets extremely hard. Uh, you can still get it out of there, but it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. And um, you might have to repolish your, your core. This way, you're not really scratching it, and it's, it's done, it's taken care of. So from here, we need to get a mandrel made. Again, I'm gonna use a pen mandrel for it. So I'm gonna get the camera moved and we'll get that process started. All right, so I've still got my, my chuck in there, so I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm just gonna drop my pin mandrel right into my headstock. I'm also going to bring up my tail stock. I do have a mandrel saver live center in there. That's very handy. It's not necessary. Um, you could use a 60 degree center in the end of your mandrel, but I just, I like this better. So I'm going to use it. First thing I need to do is take this off. Flip it around. That size is for size three. Now for shaping this, all I'm doing is I'm setting it up like I'd be turning a pen. Hopefully that's focused. If not, I'm sorry. I can't see the screen while I'm recording. Make sure it spins free. Just gonna tighten this up a little bit to where these don't spin too much. Should be good. I'm using a crap spindle gouge, but we'll make it work. All right, that spins free. Time for the face mask. No, I think that's going to do it for the um, the mandrel. I'm going to test it. Now I'm going to take that center spacer out. It's going to line up my ring blank that I just put together over there. Stick this in there. Sure enough, I've now got a mandrel for a size 11 ring. So I took the sp center spacer, I put it on the outside just to, because you don't want it spaced out anymore. Get that tightened back up. Yeah, I'm not going to go too tight on it. Because I do have some extra wood on this side whereas I don't on this side, so as I'm pushing it, it's trying to drive that, that ring core out. 
and really if you're working with sharp tools and you're spinning it fast enough you don't need to have this very tight at all all right where's my face mask back to this Like I said, I've got extra wood on this side, on the outside of my ring core. There's a couple things I could do here. I could turn it down, but I've got just about a quarter inch in there, and I don't want to mess up my super expensive mandrels here. So I'm just going to take it over to the belt sander real quick. I'm going to true up that side a little bit. Yeah, I'll probably true up this side a little bit too. That way it sits better in my mandrel. So I'm going to do that real quick. You don't need to see me sand, I'm sure. So I will be right back. All right, so I've got this sanded down just a little bit and it's almost even with the ring core. I'm gonna do the finishing with my tools. I didn't want to scuff up my ring core. Go ahead and get that locked back in there. Now that I've got that wood out of the way, I can put a little more pressure on, not that I really need to but it it does make it a little bit easier if you know your core is not sliding around at all so what I'm gonna do I'm just I came really close to my final thickness just roughing it out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna thin it out just a little bit maybe and the big thing that I'm gonna do you'll see is I'm gonna find that core and I'm going to bring the blank in just inside that core, maybe by a sixteenth of an inch. That's going to play a role in the finishing. And you'll you'll see what I mean. Or I've got other videos out there too that, that show me putting the UV resin on. Um, I'll get more into that later on. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and get my final thickness. I'm going to find my core, bring the, the blank in just inside of it. Uh, for that, I'm probably going to use my parting tool to find the blank just because it's it's easier just to kind of push it in um, and that's really the only reason. Normally, at this point, I use my square carbide and I just you know nibble away at the edge of it until I get there. But again, we're going super simple starter. So the carbide's getting put away and I'm going to use my parting tool. Now the thing that you're going to find with this is you're not going to have this perfectly centered and perfectly true like you would with a good mandrel. That being said, to try it, 
you're going to be close enough to, you know, have a little bit of fun and make yourself a couple rings. So I'm just, you probably saw, I, I nibbled away out here at the edge a little bit. I needed a little bit more space. I couldn't get my tool in there. Super easy. Got rid of the stuff in my way. So I'm going to finish coming down or coming in on both sides. And I'm going to try to get down to the ring core uh, as best I can while I'm turning. Um, if I can't, I'll scrape it away with a razor blade later. Alright, you might have seen it get shiny there once I found that core. Now, because this mandrel is not true, 100%, I've got metal on one side, I've got wood on the other. Now, to combat this, I'm going to attempt to keep my mandrels in place and just turn my blank. In theory, that should even that out a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. A little better it still needs a little bit of cleanup but that's really it's not bad at all this side's looking real good this other side it needs more cleanup so what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna come back to my spindle gouge I'm gonna just kind of chamfer over the corners just a little bit I'm gonna bring it a little bit thinner and once I do that I'm gonna sand we're almost done All right, for real this time, I'm gonna chamfer these corners. I'm gonna bring it down to its final size and sand. Alright, I'm down to my final width or thickness that I want to go to for um, using tools. From here, I'm just going to sand it with sandpaper. It looks like I got a pretty good finish using the tool. So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to start sanding. I'm going to sand it 220. And actually, since I'm doing the UV finish, I'm not going to go any further than that. Now, mm, got me thinking. Alright, so I'm not going to do a UV finish. Because that's, that's a whole other investment in time and money and learning and, and stuff. Um, I'm going to instead do a CA finish on this ring. I don't like using CA finish on rings. Um, I've heard people tell me that the CA burns their skin after contact for a while. Um, this is going to be mine, so I don't have a CA finish ring. I guess uh, this will be a good way for me to test it out, see how it works with me anyways. Um, and the reason I'm doing a CA finish is because most people that have turned pens have tried it. 
So I'm going to get this cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to get it sanded. I'm only going to sand it to, um, to 1500 and then I'll get my CA finish started. So I'll be back. All right, I changed my mind. I'm going to sand 500, then I'm going to go 1500, and then I'm just going to use a simple friction polish. All right, so we'll get this. Just turn on the speed on the lathe down a little bit. And it does not take much with these rings on each grit. I'm just going to reverse it. Not that that's extremely necessary, but I like to do it. It stands the grain back up. That was 500. This is 15. I'm just kind of taking care to make sure I get those those sharp edges there. Knock those down a little bit. Well, there's 1500. There's that. Now. My friction polish. Let's see what this ambrosia maple looks like once we get a finish started on it. You'll probably see it before I do. So it's subtle. That ambrosia maple is very subtle. I could have definitely used something else to bring that grain out. My favorite lately has been tongue oil, but for the purpose of this particular video, I want to get it done. Uh, with the tongue oil, I would let it sit for a couple weeks before I actually did any sort of final finish on it. All I'm doing is I'm pressing, I feel heat. It's actually getting really hot. It's getting a good polish. I'm gonna come in on the sides, make sure that I get the wood on the sides polished. Do another another coat. And you can build this up as much as you want. It literally just takes a drop for each coat. Now at this point I like to use a an epoxy resin coating that's activated by UV light to finish my rings it gives it a good shine it's very durable uh, but hey this is a this is a I'm just getting started ring so I'm gonna use just a friction polish something fun I like how the wood's looking on that, so I'm just gonna polish out my sides again. Make sure my ring core is nice and clear, shiny. 
really with rings it's it's all about just looking at those tiny tiny little details that makes makes it pop eventually you'll get into inlays and hybrid cores and all that fun stuff but for now here we go simple starter ring using a pen mandrel as a ring mandrel literally didn't buy any other equipment other than what I had in the shop for making pens and bowls somewhere I've got a rag hold on <clears throat> I've just got an old t-shirt just gonna polish it up just a little bit That's it. Super easy. Could be anybody's first ring. I didn't use any specialized tools. Now, if you don't have a pen mandrel and you're not sure what to do, let me know in the comments. There is a way to make a mandrel out of just wood. Uh, if you want to see me do that, uh, comment, let me know. But for now, this is it. Spalted maple, I'm sorry, not spalted, ambrosia maple ring size 11 with a friction polish finish with no specialty ring making tools. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. See you next time.